Karim and Nawar Shora were drawn to civil rights law to protect the liberties of innocent Arab and Muslim Americans after 9-11. They now use that experience to serve the entire American public in their respective jobs at the Department of Homeland Security. My mother taught us very early on. She would say, take the best that your Arab culture has to offer and take the best of what your American home has to offer and put them together. And I think it applies to Kareem and I. We took it to heart very early on. I remember coming here in fall of sixth grade. And the first few years, I remember hating it in the mid-1980s for a short, fat, hairy, Arab Muslim kid with a weird name, it wasn't the easiest. High school years were uh, initially very challenging. The uh, cultural difference between uh, the Middle East and West Virginia is, as, as you can imagine, uh, quite stark. You know, kids can be very mean anyway. I was picked on, I was beat up, I was called racial epithets. Add to it, I was one of maybe two Arabs or Muslims in the entire school, uh, one of maybe five minorities, period. My brother and I would eat lunch together. We helped support one another. Freshman year in high school, something happened. And I was starting to make friends. I had shed my skin that I was the foreign kid, I was the Muslim kid, I was the short kid. And at the end of 10th grade, I decided to run for student body president. And I won. I was the first sophomore to be elected president. With Noir, he somehow with this very funny name, got elected to be student body president in high school. He did it in, in Huntington, West Virginia. Later on in college, he's the one who got me into student government. And that's what first got me interested in, in sort of the legal policy world. My aim was immigration, public international human rights law. In law school, did international law, but also focused on cyber law, etc. I graduated law school in 2001, and I was going to go work for a dot-com in California or wherever it would take me. After law school, I decided to move to D.C., and that's when I became introduced to ADC. They wanted to be part of this advocacy group that uh, had been established way back in 1980 uh, to, to defend uh, the Arab American community. We were focusing most of our efforts on, on cultural issues at the time, uh, addressing stereotypes in Hollywood. I was unemployed, job hunting still, and I get a call from my brother saying, get to the nearest television, an airplane just hit the World Trade Center. And in my head, I'm, you know, that, you know, when your heart sinks into your stomach and I'm thinking, please God, don't let it be one of us. Within this society, as a people, as a faith, as a whatever, and this sets us back. I remember the feeling among the ADC staff was, what do we do? The organization was by far the highest profile Arab, Amer Arab American organization in DC and nationally at the time. Um, and we knew we had to do something, but we didn't know what was that something. We started receiving the, uh, the phone threats uh, within an hour of the attacks taking place. The backlash started almost immediately, uh, not just with the immediate death threats and, and other bomb threats that we got at the office, uh, but, but nationally. I mean, restaurants were being uh, vandalized, uh, uh, schools were being threatened. It impacted us twice. I mean, we, we were attacked as Americans, and then we were attacked because we're Arabs or Muslims, or Arabs and Muslims, double whammy. No longer did I care about working for the latest startup and making lots of money. All of a sudden, having been a victim of a lot of discrimination in venom and hate and violence, I knew I needed to be on the front lines. I reached out to ADC. Uh, Kareem was already working there, and I knew that they were going to need the help. 
November 1st, 2001, I come on board full-time uh, as a legal advisor. We started helping individuals on the local level deal with discrimination and hate crimes, and later government programs that, that, uh, that um, violated civil rights. Being able to file lawsuits against major airlines uh, for, for, uh, for profiling. Well, I don't think at the time I realized how life-altering, not just for my life, but for us as a society, 9-11 was. And while it was a tragedy and great loss of life, the silver lining to come of that was that it forced people like me to step up. 9-11 forced us to say, no, this is, in, this is my country. And the beauty of our society that even if you disagree with the system, even if you uh, have challenges with it, you're free enough to engage it and fix it. I would guess by 2003, within, within two years, ADC was finally at a point where we were at the national stage of dealing with core civil rights issues for all Americans. We, as Arab Americans, as Muslim Americans, are not the first group to be them. Our society, our country, as great as it is, and I still think it's the best in the world, has always had a fear of the other. Our history says that. There's always a group. And now it's our turn. I moved to government first, but uh, very shortly thereafter, he also moved, uh, working on very similar issues, both civil rights, but he's still more on the training, cultural awareness side, and I'm still on, more on the dealing with the advocacy and the policy side. I'm proud to say I work for the U.S. government. I'm proud to say I know a number of Arab Americans and or Muslim Americans in a broad range of service to their country, whether on the Hill, in law enforcement, in the intelligence community, whatever it might be, in military, and I'm proud to say that.